Hi, Tom here. I'm the creator of Photon Designer, a tool for making UI extremely quickly, which you can check out in the link below. But in this, I'll show you how to use React with Django. We'll be covering how to set up a front end of React and then the back end of Django and then interaction between the two. Here's what our final product will look like. As you can see there, some a gallery of apples. We'll be doing the super simple example, just sending data from Django and then displaying it with React to give you the idea of how to get things set up, which like I said, is really easy to do. And then you can build on it from that. So here's the article that we'll be following along, the written guide. Okay, so first of all, we'll set up React. We'll use Vite for this. So you're in your terminal and check that you've got Node and NPM installed, which I do. As you can see, my numbers here. If you don't, you need to go and install them. That shouldn't take too long. And then you're going to install Vite number one. So just run that, create Vite latest, enter your project name, and then we call, we call it React plus Django as the project name. Package name we'll call front end. And then choose your framework. I really like Vue, but we're going to use React here. And then choose TypeScript. And that's scaffolding is done, it's all set up. Now we want to do this, and so go CD React, and then install all the related packages. Okay, we're done, and don't worry too much about these warnings. Typical for React and loads of packages, but that's fine. And now we've actually run the development server. So run your set React server locally, npm run dev, and we can visit that, and there it is. And we can then, yeah, test that. So if we go into our React, and this is the top level component in here, app.tsx. And then if we were to change this to the plus, plus two encounters, uh, then now you see it increments by two. And the very nice hot, the HMR update me is what Vita is doing. It's updating the app as soon as you change something in the code. So let's say like sum is, and you'll see this, yep just like that. So that's really slick, really nice. No of you having to refresh. Now we want to style. So to style, so I've written up the React app and we can, here is the code. So I recommend you actually just starting with just copying this in. And this includes lots of styling. If you want to make your own custom styling and make it look much better, however you want, then I recommend using Photon Designer, which is my product. And you can try it out for free. It's in alpha. And here's a little clip of me entering a prompt as you can see, I'm a fruit seller designing a web app. I pasted in my code that I had done, and then it had generated some code, which you can see here, and I can go, and I specified some colors. You can give it, yeah, really, you can get some really good output. And then I pasted over our, uh, yeah, the results added CSS here, added tail and CSS there. And you can see that's how I end, we ended up with our starting app on our starting apples designed and then we'll add more complex stuff as a bonus if you'd like later so either either use photon designer and then copy this in and then say what you would like or we can just copy this below and paste it in. i'm going to copy it in below because i've already used photon designer to generate this paste this over the top over our app and you can see here we have data so this is a bit like our sample data We'll be replacing this later with data directly sent from our Django backend from the database. Next thing is to add Tailwind CSS. You probably saw me do that in the video, is to go into your index here, index HTML, and then paste in the, you can just copy this over the top or just paste in the CDN link to Tailwind. Link here to my guide on how to add Tailwind to Django in a neat way, because this is not, this is fine for our prototyping, but it's not the production way. So if you want to do it in a proper production way, then check out this link. Great, so now we've got React with our Tailwind and let's, close. oh, there we go, there are apples, as expected. Great, and if we were to go in here, back into our app and change this to Brams, for example, that's updated to Brams with the hot reload, which, so now section two, let's set up Django. Make sure you're in the VU's React folder. Copy this in, add paste, enter. So that's installed our Django app core there you go and then our app is called apples now update our settings in core to register the apps so go to core settings and then in go to installed apps and then you want to add cores headers which relates to Django go cores headers app. and then our app apples cores headers is critical here otherwise Django will block the react app so we need cores headers to say that we will allow the React app because it's on the different server 
So we'll let, let that server communicate with Django, which is on a different server. Leave a comment if you have a question. Okay, and then we copy this to add the call setting. We can add this anywhere. Let's just into the settings. So let's add this in there. So this is where we will run our React server. And then we need to add cores into our middleware. We'll just put it in there. Now we want to create a model for the apples to store in our database. So we'll go to apples and then models.py and then paste in this model. And as you can see, it's gonna be a simple apple with name, color, photo, URL. Let's create our migrations and then apply them. So manage to apply. There you go, that was very fast. And then you'll see the database appear here, the SQLite, which is there. And now we want to add some apples to the database as samples using the ORM. So just go into here, Python manage apply shell to open the Django URL, and then import an app our apple, and then just copy can create more varieties of these but these are just four commands with the urls to small versions of the apples that i found online and then we'll paste that in and they'll be created in our database cool there they are and if we wanted to see that we can actually just click on our app here or using pycharm and db we're inside our database now this is a viewer and we can see apples apple and there are our four apples. Odd that, huh, interesting, it only has created three. Why is that? I don't know why that is. Uh, maybe we need to just, maybe I just need to press enter once more. Yeah, <laughs> that was the reason. Okay, I hadn't, hadn't create, created enter on the last one. Now I refresh. There's that fourth sugar bee. Okay, let's continue. So now I want to create a serializer for the apples. So go to apples and then go file serializers.py. This serializer, as you can see, we're going to feed it uh, the apple query set, a, a query set of apples, and then it's just going to go through each one and then package it into a list of dictionaries with name, color, photo URL for each apple. Really simple. Now we want to create a view to return the apples as JSON. So go to your views for apples there, and then we paste this over the top. This does what I've just been describing. So we get our serialize apples function from here, get all the apples and then serialize them, send a JSON response. Okay, now we want to connect all the routes with by creating our URLs files. So we'll go to core URLs, paste this over the top for our top level URLs and then create a URLs file in our app folder called urls.py and then paste over the top. Now let's run our Django server to check it. Python manage up run server. Looks like it loads and then we go to it. Nope, it doesn't work. And why is that? Because this is not our actual URL. If you see the guide, we actually have set it to, to our being apples as our core. So we need to go to local host 8000 apples. And there you go, there, and we can pretty print that. And you can see this is in a JSON format. So far we've got React and we've got Django running. Now we want to connect them. Oh, <laughs> that's a nice Apple animation there. Okay, section three. So we want to get back to our React app. So make sure that you're in that directory. So CD um, into it, React plus Django. Okay, uh, now we're just gonna install Axios to make it easier when writing code to make requests to Django. And now we can copy this into our React app. So go back to React. So I'm just gonna paste this over the top, which builds on the code that I gave you earlier, but just copy this, paste it over the top. This is the use effect, so this will run when we load the page. And then this is the URL to our Django app, because you see localhost 8000. Let's go to our React app at localhost. Those are the apples and those are coming straight from the Django database. So you've connected it. So now bonus, we can style our React app using the powerful Framer Motion library, which has really nice kind of built-in modules for you to use and to make some really cool stuff. Here's one that I, we're not gonna use now, but I was looking at. So we're not gonna use this here, but just to give you a little sign, I thought this was really cool layout camera. And yeah. Maybe that's comment down below if you'd like me to cover that in a future video. Make sure you're in React plus Django again. npm install frame of motion. And now we're going to replace the content of our app with this. I'm going to paste over the top, paste over the top, and you can see we're using these are all quite similar, but we've got frame of motion here using motion, and then motion adds 
the kind of the special varieties of div it and now let's go and see how it has changed in our react app and there we go now we you see this sliding up motion when we load the page with the in data coming from django and then we can click to show our modal and then they hover and grow quite nicely so successfully created a react front end and connected to django in very few minutes besides that feel free to check out my product photo designer here oh someone has just Cool, someone's been using it quite a lot here, and you can create charts as well, which is really cool, to generate UI however you'd like to slot straight into your projects. Besides that, I'm making content weekly and link in the description to my mailing list if you'd like to sign up to get it all. In the meantime, here are some more videos. All the rest to you.